Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today we're working on Module 3, Lesson 30. We're doing more division problems, and this time we're going to work with problems that have the curious case of having a zero, uh, either in the dividend or in the quotient. Um, these are the kind of problems that sometimes give students extra trouble, uh, but you'll see that as we do them, and we'll do a couple of problems today, you'll see that there's nothing to really be afraid of with zeros. As long as we remember to just go through our regular steps, we should be just fine. So let's take a look at a couple of those problems. Problem number seven is one of those examples that has, uh, that has a zero, in, the, in this case, um, a zero in the quotient here, or in the dividend. Um, so let's take a look at... Uh, and read it first. So that's number seven is two thousand zero hundreds and sixty. So two thousand and sixty divided by five. So we're just going to go ahead and do our regular standard algorithm, and we're just going to pay attention along the way to the way in which uh, zeros uh, create trouble for us. So two thousand sixty divided by five. And then after we do get each uh, each quotient and remainder, we're going to go check our work with multiplication. So let's go through our regular steps. So let's see. Is there any number of thousands that we could multiply by 5 and still fit into 2,000s? Well, no, because even if we only had 1,000 here, 1 times 1,000 times 5 would be 5,000. That's already way too much. So we're just going to move on and pretend that we had a 0 here. In some ways, we're doing this, right? We're saying, nope, 0 doesn't fit. And now we're going to move on to the next one. Um, or, and then we end up with 2, right? So let's take a look at the next one. Now that we've pulled down our zero hundreds, we can answer the, ask the same question, which is, how many hundreds could we multiply times 5 and fit into 20 hundreds? Well, that's a real easy one, right? We could fit 4 hundreds. 4 hundreds times 5 would give us 20 hundreds, and that would exactly use up the 20 hundreds that we've got. Excellent. Now let's pull down our next unit, which is 6 tens. And then we ask our question again, how many tens would we multiply by 5 to fit into 6 tens? I mean, it looks like, to me like we would just do 1, right? That would be 1 ten times 5 would give us 5 tens here. That would mean that we would use up 5 of our 6 tens, leaving only 1. And then we'll pull down our last unit, which is our 0 ones. And then we'll ask our same question, which is how many ones times 5 would give us 10 ones, and that's a simple one. That's simply a 2, right? 2 times two ones times 5 is 10 ones, and that uses them all up. We have no remainder, so our remainder is 0, and our quotient appears to be 412. Now we can always check our work. I'll check it in red here. We can check our work with the, using the inverse operation, so we could take our quotient, 412, multiply it by 5, and let's see. 1, I'm sorry, 5 times 2 tens would be 10. So 0 would go here, 1 would go there. Next up, 5 times 10 ones would be 5 tens. I'm sorry, 5 times 1 ten would be 5 tens, plus 1 more ten would be 6 tens. Oops. Go to 6. And finally, 5 times 4 hundreds would be 20 hundreds. 20 hundreds. And sure enough, 2060, 2060, we checked our work, and we are confident about our answer. Our quotient is 412, and our remainder is 0. So if we look back a little bit at this problem, we see that one of the problems that we potentially had was getting confused about where these zeros would go, right? The first time, the first thing we tried to divide, uh, we, tried to, we tried to take the divisor 5 into 2,000s, and we didn't get anywhere. So there's a 0. And then we had to pull down a zero. And if we got confused about this, if we got misaligned or whatever, we might have some trouble with that zero. But if we just step through the regular way that we would do normal division, we should be pretty good. So let's take a look at another problem that has a different way in which zeros can cause us trouble. Let's take a look at problem number nine. 6,218 divided by four. So this is just a standard algorithm problem, so I'm going to go ahead and do 6,218 divided by 4. And we're just going to step through each of our regular process. So 6,000s, how many thousands can we multiply by 4 and still fit in 6? That answer is 1,000 times 4 would give us 4,000, and that would leave us with two more thousands. We'll pull down our next unit, which is the 200s, and we'll ask our question again. 
how many hundreds can we multiply by 4 to fit in 2200? And I think the answer there would be 5. Oops. 5 hundreds times 4 would give us 20 hundreds. That would use all but 2 of our hundreds. And let's go ahead and plunk down the next one. The next unit would be the 110. So we'll ask our same question. How many tens times 4 uh, can we fit into 21? And so I think the answer is the same, right? We could fit 5 tens times 4 would give us 20 tens. We would use up all but one of the tens. And we'll pull down our last unit, and that is an 8. And we'll ask our final question, which is, how many 1s times 4 can we fit into this? And I think that answer would be 4, because 4 times 4 would be 16, and we would end up with a remainder of 2. So here we've got what appears to be a quotient up here of 1,554 and a remainder of 2. Let's go ahead and check our work with multiplication. So we'll take our quotient, 1,554, multiply it by our divisor of 4, and let's see. We'll step through that whole process here. I'm going to switch over to red just to keep consistent. So we're going to go 4 times 4 ones. That's 16 ones. Then we're going to say 4 times 5 tens is 20 tens plus one more is 21 tens. 1 and 2. Same thing. 4 times 5 hundreds is 20 hundreds plus 2 more hundreds is 22 hundred. That's 22 hundred. And then finally, 4 times 1,000, that's 4,000 plus 2 more thousand is 6,000. 6,000. And then we have to remember our remainder 2 over here, so we have to add that back in. So let's do 6,216 plus 2 is 8. Oops. I lost my way a little bit. That is 2, 6. 6,218 or 6,218. So we are happy with our quotient and our remainder. So again, working with these problems can be a little bit more difficult, sometimes when there's zeros involved, as there was on the previous problem. But um, there's no reason to get uh, too thrown by this. Zeros pop up in a couple of cases in this case, right? When we multiply 500 times 4, we end up with 20 hundreds. No problem. It's simple subtraction. We have it again here when we multiply 5 tens times 4 and get 20 tens. No problem. Our zeros pop up, but it's just simple subtraction. Um, zeros are a special case sometimes, but they don't require us to do anything different except pay extra close attention so that we don't get thrown by place values one way or the other. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, you've got a bunch of different uh, homework problems to do that are besides number 7 and number 9. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems.